Good morning. This is Ben with Wild Last Frontier. I have a pretty exciting adventure for us today. Uh, it's going to be a little colder than the others because I'm going to be out, out and about and not just around the campfire. Uh, it is a wonderful negative 17 degrees Fahrenheit here where I'm at in Alaska. And uh, we're going to go set up some snares to try and catch some snowshoe hares. There are a whole bunch of bunny tracks and stuff in this in this vicinity. Trust me, I found a whole bunch while I was looking for my dogs when they ran off one time. Um, so I just purchased some snares the other day, and I'm going to go see if I can find a good spot to set them up. But before that, I want to start a fire using a means I haven't shown yet, aka the flint and steel, which is much harder than just a ferro rod, and uh, make some coffee. I'm going to need it. All of the basics of regular fire starting apply. However, we're changing the ignition source. So, what I'm going to do is grab that steel in my left hand, that piece of flint in my right, and fold over a piece of this char cloth over the stone, and then wail at it, well, more gently than that, but strike it with the steel to try and get a single spark, or multiple sparks, to catch into the char cloth. Rather than sending a shower of sparks with a ferro rod, we're working with individual sparks here, which is why it can be more difficult. The char cloth held up against the edge of the stone, and then I'll strike that surface to try and get a spark. Well, the spark's flying in the wrong direction. Well, there we go. There's a little bitty ember on there. I don't know if you can see it. That was quick, faster than normal. So now I transfer that onto a piece of birch bark and hopefully get a flame. Come on. Dang it. Well, as you can see, it's hot enough. But I didn't get a flame, so I gotta try again. This is why it's a good idea to have a whole ton of this stuff on hand. Or, if you're better at it, just uh, start a fire first try. If you can see that, there we go. All right, round two, fight. Oh, no, 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 not in the snow. Uh, lost it again. at it. Alright, I give up. I guess this shows that flint and steel can work. Not sure why the bark didn't light, but uh, it's definitely much more recreational and less of a survival tool. Not choose that. If you were just going to take one thing with you, I'd rather have a lighter. Man, that would have been so cool if it was lit with a flint and steel. Oh well. Well, I got myself a new little rack to over the fire to boil water. 
I think it's a plate holder. Never actually seen one before. But looks like it'll work pretty well. Well, this is already one of those days where I have to move my chair a little closer to the fire. Whew! Well, this canteen comes from a set, a Swiss Army canteen set. I like it. It's a little smaller than U.S. military canteens, but it just fits the hand nicely. And that over there is the canteen that goes in it. Tall and thin. It'll fit in a backpack better than some other canteens I've seen, so. Psyching myself up to go out in the woods. Well, I've had my coffee now and I feel great. That's just what I need to get going. If you get that reference, you're definitely a 90s kid. Well, I'm only a few feet off the road over here and I can already see a good bunny trail. Oh, right there. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Snowshoe hares, arctic hares, and ra other rabbits and bunnies are definitely creatures of habit. So if you find a good trail like this, chances are there's going to be one comes through at another point in time. However, this being way close to the road, I'm not going to set up a snare here. That's a terrible idea. So I'm going to go somewhere back in there, far, well, decently far away from people, but definitely far enough away from any houses or anything that uh, no pets are likely to get caught in it. Also, Alaska mandates that you track your traps of any kind at least once every 72 hours. I'm going to be checking these once to twice a day until I either get something, or get tired of looking. But, some thick brush back in there. Whew. This is going to be fun. I don't think that I've ever seen so much bunny sign in my life as I have back here. But, I found the perfect spot for a snare. This right here has everything that you want for a snare setup already natural. There's a little spot under there where the bunnies have been going underneath that branch or these branches. It's blocked off on both sides by natural materials whereas normally and with other snares I might show you you have to set up sticks or brush or whatever to to funnel them into a location. And with this it's already pre-built and they're already going under the, under the uh, branches. So I'm gonna go ahead and set up a snare here then I'm going to mark it so it's easy for me to identify where I'd set it up. And there you go. Couldn't get a more textbook snare if I tried. Even though there is natural blockage and channeling of the sticks, I went ahead and put a few extras over here just in case they attempted to go around. And the snare goes all the way from the snow up to above the log. So any part of the bunny's body that goes through there I'm hoping it'll snag it, hoping to get it around the neck for a near instant kill, very humane. Uh, but if not, like I said, I'm going to be coming and checking these once or twice a day, which is much more frequent than is mandated by Alaska law. Because uh, I want bunny meat, and I want them uh, to have a quick end to their lives. I also went ahead, tied a little bit of red electrical wire up here as a marker. Now I should be able to track myself back through the snow to this point, uh, but if it snows, covers up my tracks, or it's dark or something, I do want something here to tell me where my snare is at. And if I get something in there, I will know it. Because when bunnies get caught, they kick up and freak out and 
make a whole mess of the snow. And you'll, you, you're able to tell from a distance usually. So, all right, we go ahead and find two more spots and set them up. And here's the walk of shame. I found a nice, nice good spot and realized I had left my other snares back at the old spot. So now I gotta backtrack my way through all this brush. Grab my snares and go all the way back. Oh, oh here we go. Don't leave your snares behind. All right, snare number two required a decent amount more sight preparation, but I think it's a good spot. So there, I've got the snare in this beautiful little opening, a couple twigs nearby. But at bunny eye level, I want them to look down that trail and see, oh, that's clear compared to this. And compared to that. So... If bunnies are like I think they are, and prefer the path of least resistance, they'll go straight through there. And there's number three. Got another rabbit fence set up, blocking off either side, using some pre-existing uh, blocking terrain. There's uh, fallen tree branches there that were already over each other, and I saw that the trail went underneath. So. After sprucing it up a bit, <laughs> pun intended, I now have my third and final snare. All right, I'm gonna check these tonight before I put this video out, see if I get anything. Whew. Well, there you have it. It's pretty rough work out here at 17 below. Whew. I'll say this is not my first time setting up snares, but hopefully my first successful snare catch. Uh, one thing I've learned as I've gotten older is that it's really great to be able to make something yourself. Invaluable, in fact. But sometimes purpose-built equipment just makes all the difference. So instead of trying to make my own snares, I bought some. Dollar eighty nine a piece. If that gets me a bunny, well, that's worth twenty dollars of trapping line and making them myself. All right. Well, hopefully, I have some success. Even if I don't, I had a lot of fun. My old man body. Off I go. Check the traps for the first time. It's been several several hours since I placed them. It gets dark here around 4 p.m. now. So I guess we'll see what happens. We've got a light snow falling, you can probably see. I can still very easily follow my tracks up to where I put the traps, so wish me luck. Well, nothing in trap number one. Just gotta keep moving through that thick brush. It looks thicker at night when all I can see is 10 feet in front of me with a headlamp. Nothing in snare number two either. In fact, I haven't seen any bunny tracks at all. Maybe they'll be more active in the morning, but still gotta check them. And nothing in snare number three. All right, I'll check him again in the morning. If I don't get anything then, I'm just going to wrap this video up and maybe make a separate video if I do get one later on. Tell you what though, these woods are spooky at night. I should have done a Halloween themed episode out here. A lot of people get claustrophobic in the woods at night hearing all sorts of sounds and thinking they're seeing stuff rustle in the bushes, but <laughs> when it's this cold up here in Alaska, oh boy, hardly anything moving around. In fact, I'm probably the scariest thing out here right now. 
All the bears are hibernating, and the moose are probably bedded down to get through this little snowstorm. But you know, I guess there's one thing out here that's more scary than me, and that's the Nothing. Nothing in the snare. Fresh bunny tracks right on the other side. Doesn't look like it went through there. Hard to say. Or maybe it just slipped right through. Ooh, it's like almost negative 25 right now though, so. Yep. Oh cool, would you look at that? Fresh bunny tracks, a little, little bit of bunny poop. Nothing in the snare. <sighs> All right. Nothing in snare number three either. Oh boy. There are a lot of fresh bunny tracks around here, or maybe not a lot, I've seen at least three to four sets of fresh ones, but and fresh meaning last night or this morning after the snowfall. Unfortunately, that's not good enough if they didn't get in the trap. <laughs> and I'm not coming out here with a rifle and looking for them. It's way too cold to bother doing that. I'll let the snares work for me. All right, well, thanks for watching. I hope it was interesting at least. I know for my part, I've enjoyed it. Oh, regardless of how cold it's been. Ah. Just getting out and seeing some new territory and practicing a skill. <sighs> and getting to show how twisty and turny these woods are back here. All right, thanks for watching. And have a good one.